Hello everyone, welcome back. All right, so last episode we were able to make, I keep saying episode, it's all one episode, but just different parts. So in the last parts we were able to get images to display on our graphic panels as well as videos, but we're only able to have one at a time. If we try to make any more, we're just going to create and layer them on top of each other within the same layer. So what we need to do is add a way where we can now remove all of the old uh, images or videos and only keep up with the current graphics that have been created last. So let's go through the process of taking care of that now so that way we can keep our UI clean and our performance uh, minimal. Performance impact minimal I should say. So our graphic layer is just creating the graphics at which point then it's up to the graphic object to fade itself in. It goes through the process and then we'll go ahead and fade itself in and then that's it. It just stays there. It doesn't do anything else after that. So how about we check and see if we're fading out the image, then once it reaches the zero opacity, then it should go ahead and destroy itself because it's no longer valid and it shouldn't be used anymore. So let's run a check. So if we reach the target, let's see what the target was. So if target equals zero, then we know that this object should be destroyed. So we can go ahead and say destroy or object dot destroy. And we're going to destroy the renderer dot game object. Okay, and let's also go ahead and set our speed to default to one. That way we don't technically have to pass in a speed if we don't want to. And now if we go to graphic layer testing and yield for a second after we set the video and then tell the current graphic on that layer to fade out, we should see it fade out and destroy itself. There we go. Fades out and it destroyed itself. Now that works, but it only destroys the renderer. It does not actually destroy the graphic object, which would still be associated to the layer. As a matter of fact, if we yield for two seconds after fading out and then try to check what the current graphic is, then Unity reports it as a graphic object that still exists, even though the object was destroyed in the scene. Now currently with our running logic, that's not going to cause any issues, but if something else tries to access the current graphic and sees that something's assigned to it, but it was actually partially destroyed, that's not going to be good. And then we're probably going to get some null reference exceptions if we try to do anything further than just check for what the current graphic is. So we want to make sure that we're able to reset that on our layer. Now, our graphic object has no idea what layer it's on. But we do cache the, uh, the layer temporarily as a parameter when we create the graphic object. So why don't we store the layer as a parameter within the graphic object? And then once we destroy it, if that was the current graphic on the graphic layer, then let's just remove it. So let's also make a private graphic layer layer, okay? And as we're assigning the graphics path, let's also say this dot layer equals layer for both the texture and the video. That way we have cached our layer. And now when we come down to fading, if we destroy this object, let's actually take this to a different function. So private void destroy. And then if target equals zero, we're going to destroy. Okay, and so we'll destroy the renderer. And then we'll just, well, before we do that, we don't, we want to check and before we actually destroy it, let's check if layer dot current graphic is not equal to null and layer dot current graphic dot renderer equals renderer, then we want to go ahead and remove the current graphic from the layer. Now we do have this privately assignable here, so we're actually going to make this just public. We could go ahead and make in a function to reset it, but at that point we may as well make the variable public as well. So we'll just control what we destroy it with. So layer dot current graphic equals null. And now if we run that same test again, we can see that after destroying the graphic, it is now reporting as null. Great, so that takes care of any graphics that we fade out of the scene. But if we're fading in a new one, when we create a graphic, it's automatically going to fade in. And when we create a new graphic, that one's going to fade in, but nothing's going to happen to the old one. So the old one would still remain there. 
Like if we go ahead and set the texture first, and then set a video, the video should override the texture. And so we can see that the graphic is created first for our background, and then the video is created on top. So the video fades in, then it fades out, and it destroys itself, but the old graphic is still there. Now, that's not going to work. If we want these two to exist separately of each other, and one remain when the other is destroyed, we would separate these onto different layers. But as of right now, they're both on the same layer. And that's how that should work, but anything that comes in afterwards should override and destroy what was previously assigned to the same layer. Which means, we need to do something opposite to if we've reached our target and the target was zero. If the target was not zero, otherwise we need to clear out the other, lay the other graphics on that layer. So we'll go ahead and make a another private void destroy background graphics on layer. And then call that if we have reached our target alpha and the alpha was one. So it, when we reach our destination alpha and it's fully visible, this is a new image that has taken the place of the others, so we'll destroy all of the others. We don't actually have a method for that. So let's go into our graphic layer. The graphic layer will be responsible for keeping track of all of the other graphics. So let's make ourselves a private list of graphic objects. And this will be old graphics. So when we create a new graphic, we need to make sure that if we have a current graphic already, it now gets assigned to the old graphics. So if current graphic is not equal to null, then old graphics dot add current graphic. And now let's make a function to remove all of the old graphics. Public void destroy old graphics. And we'll just go through for each bar g in old graphics. Then we'll go ahead and say object.destroy the g.renderer.game object. And once we're through, old graphics dot clear. We'll clear out the list. So in our graphic object, to destroy all the background objects on the layer, we'll call our layer dot destroy old graphics. Now I'm going to change the delay for when the video fades out to three seconds so we can see this happen. So we fade in our image, and then the video, once the video is fully faded in, it goes ahead and destroys that old graphic. Now let's go ahead and add ourselves a little safeguard in place, just to prevent any null exception references when we go to destroy these renderers. So if current graphic is not equal to null, and old graphics dot contains the current graphic, we need to make sure that the old graphics does not contain the current graphic that we're trying to add into it. It shouldn't, but there could be a case where that might actually happen. Don't ask me how, but I'm just putting that safeguard in place anyway. So if we go ahead and create two different layers, layer 0 and layer 1, and then assign layer 0 to the video nebula, and layer 1 to the texture of the spaceship interior, which uses alpha, then we wind up with two stacked images, like in the demo that I showed at the very beginning of this uh, series, where we have this one layer on top and a video playing in the background. We can go ahead and disable layer 0, and you can see how these two work together. Now, we could do more than just our background, obviously. We can go through and add our cinematic panel and link that to our third layer. And we can also create our foreground by adding all of this into the graphic panel manager. So we could come through and add a cinematic layer and set a texture on our cinematic that should show up above everything else and right beneath the dialogue. To show this in effect, I'll create Stella first, and then set the texture on the cinematic layer, as that should show above the characters. So here we are, Stella is now on the screen, and wants to take a look at something on the cinematic layer. 
There we go. Cinematic picture of that sweet little pup. And all we can see is the dialogue. Something else that we might want to do is we might want to clear the layer and we might want to clear the entire panel and all of its layers. So let's start off by clearing each individual layer. So this is not too different from destroying the graphics and fading out the current one. So let's just go ahead and make a new public void called clear layer. Actually, this is on layer, so we can just call it clear. And what we want to do is we want to take our current graphic and fade it out. So what we want to do is we want to take all of our graphics and just completely fade all of them out and destroy them. So let's go ahead and take, let's go ahead and do this. Let's say that our, our, um, our current graphic dot fade out as long as we have a current graphic. So if current graphic is not equal to null, then let's fade it out. And then let's also go through each of our old graphics and fade them out as well. So for each var g in old graphics, then old graphics dot fade, or actually g needs to be g dot fade out as well. Then after we read that final dialogue, let's go ahead and take the cinematic layer and clear it. So we got our pup, and then we clear, and it's gone. But we still got our background panel, which has two layers on it. So now let's clear an entire panel. As simple as you think it might be, let's go ahead and prove you right. Public void, let's call clear here. And then all we're going to do is say for each var layer in layers, then layer.clear. And so let's go ahead and yield return new wait for seconds one, and then our panel, which is actually background, will go ahead and clear that panel, which would clear all the layers. So here we go, fade out cinematic, and we fade out all of the background layers. So that'll do it for this episode. We have now gotten our textures and our videos working. We can clear them out and we can spawn new ones and everything seems to be working pretty well. So in the next episode, we're going to make a very short part and it's going to be adding this to our command system. So I'll see you guys there.